Hey, Ride Riders, Keith Wheeler here back with another video for you. And today we're gonna to talk about what would I do if I had to start my business all over? So if you're just starting out, what are the nine steps that I suggest you take to make sure that you're as successful as you possibly could be? If you're excited for this video, then give that video a thumbs up and let's get started. The first thing I would do is find my why. What that means is, is why am I doing this? Why am I starting this business? Is it for family? Is it to quit my day job? What is the reason? What is the why? Because this is paramount for you to focus on to make sure that when, uh, when you get those bumps along the road, that you stay focused. You know, I actually have on the other side of the room, I actually have my, my wall, my why wall, and it's basically a billboard that shows all the different people in my life, in my family, things I want to do, things I want, you know, big house you want to own, uh, your vacation trip you want to take, whatever it is for you, whatever is your why, that's what I put on my why wall. So that way when things are struggling and they still struggle for me from time to time, I can look across the room, see that why wall and remember why it's all worth it. Number two is choose a type of book. That's right, one type of book. If you know anything about me, you know that I have no content, low content books, children's books, young adult novels, nonfiction books. I, I'm in a, diff, a bunch of different areas. And that's fine for my business because I've been doing this since 2016. But when you're first starting out, and if I was to first start out all over again and start a new business, I would focus on one area. Whatever area I'm the most passionate about, that's the one I would do. So if it's no content, low content, great. If it's picture books, fine. If it's nonfiction, wonderful. Doesn't matter what it is, but find one and go into that one. There's plenty of time later on to branch off into others. Number three is to research and find at least two niches within that book type that I can actually compete in. You know, ones that aren't oversaturated, ones that I know enough about or I can research enough about that I can do a good enough job in that niche that I can actually start being successful in it. That is super important because especially when you first start out, it's very easy to get deterred. And so you want to make sure that you do your due diligence and you research some niches that, that you can get those early wins in because that's really what's going to help drive you and give you those endorphin rushes to drive you to keep going. Number four is one of the areas that most people kind of forget about, and that is determine what resources you have. And by resources, I mean time and money. You know, if you've got more money than time, that's great. Then you can hire out on some of the areas that, that you're not the best at. If you don't have a lot of discretionary funds, but you have time on your hands, well then the time is your biggest resource. But also, what other resources do you have? If you're writing a book, you know, do you have access to editors? Do you have access to people inter interested in that that could be beta readers? You know, these are resources that you can use as well. So you need to know what resources you have available. So that way, right as you first start into the industry, you already are way ahead of most people because most people don't think about this until, well, they, they have to. This way, you're thinking about it ahead of time. So you know, right from the beginning, what resources you have at your disposal. And as you grow in this particular area, you're going to gain more resources. You're also going to be able to determine what resources are really beneficial for you and which ones aren't. Number five is set realistic expectations. You know, the, the key word is realistic. So many times I've gotten emails where people say, Keith, I've been, I published three books already and none of them are selling and I'm not making any money. Okay. What are you doing to, to make money? You know, what are you doing? Are you, are you promoting it? Are you marketing it? You know, how, how much research did you do in the niche to begin with? Setting yourself up again for success is paramount to make sure that you don't just quit early on. And so you need to make sure that you set realistic expectations. It's not realistic to think that in the first month you're going to be making thousands of dollars. It's not realistic. I, I think my first month I didn't make any. My second month I might, might have made like $16, you know? So you need to make sure that you set realistic expectations. You know, you can set expectations for early on as well as, you know, what your end goal is. Again, you, to, to make sure that your early expectations are realistic is a huge way to make sure that you don't get 
deter it early on and, and just quit. So again, set realistic expectations and goals. You know, you want the big goals and the little goals. So that way you can, you know, again, get those endorphin rushes when you, you know, when you meet those goals, you know, publish your first book, boom, goal number one, sell your first book, boom, goal number two, you know, those kind of things, little goals. And then the big goals, you know, make a thousand dollars a month, make a $10,000 a month, whatever goals you set, that's fine. You know, but you want to make sure that you set the little goals and the big goals and make sure that based on the time that you can put into it, that they're realistic. Number six is set a time frame. This is again, another thing that a lot of people don't do. They don't set a time frame on when they want to achieve these goals. You know, if, if your goal is to quit your day job, how long are you going to give yourself to do that? You know, knowing your niche that, that you've researched or niches that you've researched, knowing that, that you can compete in that, knowing what resources you have and you know, again, whether monetarily or, you know, time-wise, knowing what your goals and expectations are, what timeline can you really give yourself? You give yourself six months? Do you give yourself a year? Do you give yourself five years? Whatever it is, whatever works for you is fine. But so many people don't do it. They don't give themselves a timeline. And the reason why that's so important is that with that timeline, like if you give yourself a year, then that means you can't quit until that year is up. You can't quit until you've reached that goal. That way, it's another way to kind of get yourself out of that mindset of, oh, I've been doing this for two months, I'm not making any money, I'm just done. No, no, you focus, you give yourself a time frame, and you stick to it. It's also a great way to hone in the shiny object syndrome. You know, if you start getting pulled off into all these different directions, then that, that time is gonna go by way too fast, and you're not gonna see the success that you want. But if you set the time frame and you keep a laser focus on your areas, well, then that's a great way to make sure that you're going to be successful. Okay, so you've got your realistic expectations and goals, and you've got your time frame, right? That you're that you've set. Well, now it comes to the point where you need to do the math, figure out based on what your expectations are and what kind of time frame you've given yourself, how much you need to work, how much you need to create. You know, if you set a goal that you want to, you know, create 300 books in six months, okay, and you need to sit down and do the math and say, okay, I know how many, you know, how many hours a day I can put into it. So that tells me how many books do I need to, to create a week to get to that expectation. Or if I want to make X amount of dollars a month, you need to do the math on, okay, so one of those books, I'm going to get uh, two dollar profit off each one. Okay, so at two dollars a profit, and you want to make X amount of dollars per month, well then, okay, how many books do you need to sell a month to make that amount of money? It, regardless of what your goal is and your expectations, again, realistic expectations, you need to sit down and do the math and say, okay, this is how many books I need to sell. Okay, now you know how many books you need to sell. How many books realistically do you think you need to create to sell that many books? How many ads do you need to run? All of that all comes from you doing the math. So now that you've done the math, you, you know what needs to be done. Again, here's another area that a lot of people don't do, and that is set a schedule. And I don't just mean uh, I'm gonna write books on Mondays. You know, Tuesdays are my research day. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about within a day, the days that you're working, set a schedule. I'm only gonna check emails for 30 minutes. So from 6 a.m. to 6.30, I'm checking emails. After that, my emails get put away and I don't look at them again until tomorrow. That's it, it's that simple. And then within that, you know, how, how many hours are you gonna set aside to for creation? How many hours are you gonna set aside for uh, research, for you know, preparing for marketing, whatever you're doing, you, setting a schedule is a great way to keep you on track. So keeping you on track, you've got that wall, you've got the, the why wall, you've got your, your expectations and your goals and you've got your time frame, and now you've got your schedule. Your schedule is a drilled down way to keep you on track. So that means no playing Marvel Snap until your day is done. No, again, no checking emails outside of that email checking window. Again, keeping you laser focused. It is not unheard of for me literally to turn my laptop on airplane mode when I'm writing, so that way I don't get alerted to anything. And even your research, I highly suggest, should be done scheduled. Because if you do research on really anything, you know, if, if it's on, uh, on Reddit or if it's on YouTube or whatever, 
it's very easy to get sucked into that and spend way more time researching than you planned on. So again, setting that setting time in your schedule for research is a great way to make sure that overall you stay on topic. And last but certainly not least, this is one that I've harped on quite a bit over the last eight. And number nine is remember your why. It's not gonna be easy. This, I, I mean, I absolutely love this industry, but there are definitely uh, down days and days when you feel isolated, days when you know the sales don't come in like you expected, you know, maybe Q4 wasn't as strong as you wanted it to be, whatever. Remember that why. Remember the reason you're here. Remember your expectations that you set for yourself. Maybe they weren't as realistic as you thought they were. So readjust them. The important thing is to not quit and remember your why. Remember why you're doing this. Is it to quit your day job? Is it to spend more time with your family? Is it to have extra spending money so you can finally afford Netflix now that they've upped the price 13 times? Whatever, whatever your why is, that's what you need to remember when times get tough. And that's why, I, like I said, I, that's why I use the why wall. So when things are tough, it's very easy for me to just look over and remember the why. Well, I hope you found these nine things that I would do if I was starting my business all over again. I hope you found them helpful. If so, again, please give that thumbs up a smashy smashy. It lets YouTube know to share this with other people. Also, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and click that bell notification so you get alerted every time I put out new videos just like this one. Speaking of first starting out, if you check out this video right here, it's actually a video I did of my debut novel getting released and, and I actually had it physically in my hand. It was a bit emotional, I must admit. If you've already seen that video or maybe you're not really interested in that sappy kind of stuff, well, the, YouTube says that this video right here has got your name written all over it. I'll catch you in one of these videos and remember to write right.